So in addition to these three examples of more government stewardship of the land and property management, there's also the option of offering subsidized government loans to tenants and emergency permitting and residencies that would otherwise take up, you know, 20 to 30 percent of a would be tenant's income. There's also occupancy requirements that can be mandated where a residency or property has to be put to good use or occupied for a certain amount of time throughout the year or it effectively goes up for grabs into the hands of the state of the local community or to a cooperative. There's also the option of limiting foreign investment as well as domestic saturation of ownership. In other words, limit the number of land and properties which can be leased and owned by a single party or affiliates and heavily taxing each additional property until it's no longer profitable to do so. You have the options of, you know, the Scientology cult, uh, which is bought up, you know, saying whole swaths of land across the country in the United States, as well as the influx of foreign investment, uh, which has disrupted markets around the world for decades. There's also the option of limiting the number of properties which can be used for Airbnb and similar services. Now, again, this doesn't mean that these things have to be, you know, put away. I don't feel as if they can, uh, you know, be completely cut off, nor should they. I just think that it's, you know, we've seen enough damage and havoc being wreaked on these local communities, uh, you know, very small communities that have already had issues uh, with, you know, home ownership and affordable housing and whatnot, and just, you know, the supply of housing, that Airbnb, it's time to, you know, take a cut. Now, as we're trying to implement changes to any form of system. Uh, there's going to be pushback. There's going to be resistance. There's the ex continued existence of shell corporations, offshore banking, tax loopholes, as well as the general non-enforcement of laws uh, for the privilege, for those who have enough wealth, resources, or connections to be able to skip out on the taxes, not give their fair share, and continue to keep us in this very one-sided arrangement where they continue to just make money off of our labor, and we are carrying the burden more and more and more, um, you know, for taxes and supporting, you know, infrastructure and, and, and whatnot. There's also a lack of engagement as well as a general ignorance or lack of literacy, I should say, from the general public. It has been increasing over years, uh, but what we've also seen is the uh, extreme polarization and the extreme, you know, diversions that people take in this path of becoming, you know, enlightened or more informed. Uh, it's not always as simple as just exposing people to uh, all the different information that's available and allowing them to find their best way, you know, saying to the same end point. Some people's end goals are completely contrary to that of other people's uh, end goals. Uh, there's also basic human impulses like greed, apathy, favoritism, laziness. Uh, these collide with more dangerous ideas and preferences like racism, sexism, Islamophobia, homophobia, um, which can translate into exploitative housing practices as well as many other runoff social ills. Another one is political and cultural ideology, as well as, you know, actual perseverance, actual willpower, because in addition to, you know, having conservatives and the right wing in general, not really supporting, uh, you know, saying government intervention and in things like jobs programs and food programs and expanding voting rights, they most often work to do the opposite. Uh, there is also a lack of uh, real willpower, real integrity in many of the mainstream Democrats. Now, they are not one of the same. Uh, Democrats have their issues. The mainstream Democrats and liberal parties have their issues, but they have overwhelmingly been spending more of their time, you know, trying to expand voting rights, expand access to health care um, and whatnot. But when it comes to really tackling and untying those bonds to corporate lobbying and, you know, a lot of those perks, a lot of the pork and whatnot, they can be just as guilty uh, in that respect. But let it not be said that they are ever exactly one and the same. Having overlapping, you know, saying ideas or overlapping practices or, you know, saying finding, a, you know, common ground and agreement with somebody you usually disagree with does not mean that you are just forfeiting all your values and understanding. This is just the complexity of human, you know, saying life of human ideology and experiences. And then there's more external issues like raising the minimum wage and providing a universal basic income, uh, improving the health care system by either introducing a two tiered uh, system or full government subsidized there is also legal and administrative disputes that inevitably are going to come down and continue for decades, as well as the, raising the general literacy uh, and engagement of the, of the public at large and getting them on the same path instead of letting everybody just kind of find their own truth, as well as many other factors. So that basically summarizes my feelings about rent control. I think that it is often used as a silver bullet in discussions, as well as implementing policy uh, by a lot of well-meaning left wing and progressive, uh, you know, coalitions. Uh, but that the negative repercussions are rarely discussed or taken into account. And in order to make these you know, concepts more legitimate in the minds of not only the opposition, but those whom still are on the fence about these ideas or first being introduced to them, we have to make sure we're taking full ownership of the you know, 
potential, you know, say negative outcomes that come from it, not just boasting about the potential positives.